Hi everyone, it's Lindy on here from Pink Whisper Designs. Today I have a really fun spring floral basket card to show you. And we're going to turn this into an easel card. So let's go ahead and get started. So to create the little basket for our basket of flowers, we're using these two dies here. And we're also going to be using that bow later on, those little flowers and that little grassy border. And this is from the Build a Basket Easter die set from Lawn Fawn. For paper here, I'm going to be using the Spectrum Noir Ultra Smooth Premium White cardstock. This is a 100 pound weight. And I'm using this paper because I'm going to be coloring the basket in using my alcohol markers. So I've gone ahead and run that right through my Sizzix Sidekick machine. And now I have my Spellbinders tool in one. And I'm just poking out all these little pieces. I've laid this on my sculpting mat and I can just kind of brush out all those little pieces. So once that's all set, I'm gonna go ahead and color this in. Again, using my alcohol markers, I'm using the ice gray blend and the ice gray shades. These are the Spectrum Noir Tri-Blend markers, so you get three colors in one pen. I'm starting with the blends because those are the lighter ones, and then the shades will give me some darker colors. So you see the light was on one end of the marker. Now I've gone to the middle of the marker for the medium tone and then back to the opposite end for the darkest tone. And so I'm just going to blend these out and then I will come in with this, the lightest one on the shades marker just to give it a little more shadow on the edges here. And then I'll just go in reverse order and blend that out. I'm going to do the exact same thing for the other side here. And I find these tri-blend markers really easy to use. All the colors are already determined for you. They blend perfectly. Um, I just find that the, the price point on them is really good and they I find that they work really well. So I'll continue blending this out. And then for that little basket, the overlay basket, I'm just going to go right around the edges with this lightest tone. Just add a, just a tiny little bit of a shadow there. So I'll go ahead and glue these two together. I'm using my Nuvo Deluxe Adhesive, and I'm just going to put a little bit of adhesive around the edges, and then a few bits of it in between here. You want to make sure that there is a little slot at the top, that's going to fit the little grass for the basket. You want to make sure you don't glue those shut. You want to leave that open there. So just double check that. So now I can set this aside to dry. Now using my Lawn Fawn cardstock in cilantro, this is a 100 pound weight. I'm going to go ahead and die cut that little grassy border and I'll be die cutting three of these. I'll just show you the one here on camera. And using my blue raspberry, these are the Hero Hues Reactive Inks, and I've used these before and they are just beautiful. They blend really nicely. So I'm just gonna add a little shadow there at the bottom of each of these little grassy borders. Now I'm using the Strathmore Bristol Smooth 100 pound cardstock to die cut out my little flowers. So I've just grabbed some scraps that I have here. And I want to add some color to these. So I'm using the Hero Hues Fruit Punch, Lemon Drop, and Grape Slush. I'm just going to grab my craft mat, just so you can see the colors a little bit better here. So what I'll do is I'll just apply a little bit of the color to the mat here. So I'm going to start off with this Fruit Punch. And then I'm going to add a little bit of water with my Distress Sprayer. I'll get that nice and wet and then I'm just going to place that paper right over top and just pick up color. And I don't want this to be even. I kind of want light and dark areas. We're just going to use this to die cut up those little flowers. I didn't want to spend the time coloring all of these in individually. So I thought it would be easiest just to create some color here. Now I'm using the lemon drop doing the same exact thing. And then I'll go to that grape slush. And again, this will just make it much easier to die cut out all these little flowers. So once I have all of those colored, 
I'm going to give this a quick heat set with my heat tool. And now I can go ahead and die cut a whole bunch of flowers here. So I'm running those again through the Sizzix Sidekick machine. And you'll see that one of the flowers has a little hole in the center and the other one is solid. And then you do get that little center as well, which we're not going to be using, but that does die cut as well. Now I've got all my little flowers die cut. Now I'm using the Pixie Dust cardstock from Lawn Fawn, which has this beautiful sparkle to it. And that's what I'm going to use to create the little bow for the basket. So I'll go ahead and die cut that. Now to attach this bow together, I'm going to be using my Nouveau Deluxe Adhesive. And I like to just kind of curl the ends of the bow a little bit just to get it started. Just makes it easier to pull this into the center. So I'm going to put a little bit of glue right in the center there. And then I'll use my tweezers just to bring each side into the center. I'm going to use my uh, reverse tweezers just to clamp that down and hold that in place. I'll let that dry for a minute or two. Then I'll come back, add a little bit of glue to the front and the back of the center of the bow. Then I'll just wrap that little piece all the way around. I clamp that down again and let that dry. And then I just, I'm going to add the little tails to the bow here as well. And then I'll clamp that one last time and set that aside to dry. So while that's drying, we can get started with the little uh, items for the basket. We're going to start off with the spring sprig. We're going to take that sprig and then those little tiny dots, those little circles. So we're cutting the circles from the sparkle cardstock that we used before and the sprig from the cilantro cardstock. I've cut three of those sprigs and a whole bunch of those little tiny circles. And with the Nouveau Deluxe Adhesive, I'm going to put a little dot of adhesive on each of those little circles on the sprig and then just attach those. And that's going to give these a little bit of sparkle. And I did that for all three of those. Now I'm going to grab these two little sprigs and these are from the Magic Iris Birdhouse add-on set. And for paper I'm using the Schoolyard Lawn Fawn paper in this kind of blue-green color. Then I'm going to take the Hero Hues Blue Raspberry and I'm going to add a little bit of color using my foam applicator right along the edges of those leaves just to add a little bit of a shadow there. And I did that for quite a few of those. So now I've got my sculpting mat and I'm going to press down on the back of the solid flower. And then with the one with the hole in it, I'm going to press on the front side and just kind of push down right in the center there. Then with this solid one, I'm flipping it back over. And again, I'm just pushing down on the back side just to sculpt those petals backwards a little bit. And then I'll push down on the front in the center. And that's going to round those petals back a little bit. Then what we'll be doing is layering these two, one on top of each other. And I'm just going to add a little bit of that Nouveau glue right around that opening of the circle and glue these together. And I want to offset these a little bit just to make them look a little bit more full. And what's nice here now is we're not going to place the center in there. We're going to use some Nouveau drops later and that's going to create a nice little opening for those drops to fall into. So here we've got the gloss white crystal drops. And again, I'm just going to place it right in the center of each of those flowers. And because we have that little hole there, it's going to sit in there really nicely. And that's going to give, give us a nice pop of white in the center of each of these flowers. So I went ahead and did all of these. So once those are all set, I'm going to grab the largest die 
And these are from the Outside In Stitch Rectangle Stackables dies. And I'm going to die cut two of these out of the Strathmore Bristol Smooth cardstock. So these will give us a nice stitch border all the way around and I've got two of those die cut. So I'm going back to the three colors we used before. And again I'm going to grab my, um, my mat here, my craft mat, and I'm going to spritz a little bit of water on the fruit punch. And then what I want to do is just add some little splashes of color across the card, kind of from left to right going up. So I'm just going to rip a piece of scrap paper in half here and just block off or mask off the two corners of the card so that I don't get any splashes where I don't want them to be. So I'm starting again with that fruit punch color and I'll clean that off and I'll add the lemon drop. Now I'm not drawing off the fruit punch here because when these two colors combine together, it gives a really pretty like creamsicle color. So I'm gonna leave those both wet and where they do touch each other, they'll make a third color. But now I do wanna heat set it before I come in with the grape slush. So I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that's nice and dry. Now I'm gonna add the grape slush here and I'll just spatter that as well. So now I can go ahead and heat set that one last time. Now once that's dry, I can go ahead and attach these two panels together. And because we're making an easel card, I want to make sure that it's nice and thick so that it has a little substance to it. So that's why I'm adding that second layer here. Now I'm using my We Are Memory Keepers bone folder and I'm just going to press that out. Now I've got two panels of the Strathmore Bristol Smooth cardstock that measure four and a quarter by five and a half. And I'm going to glue these two together as well and do the same thing here. Again, just trying to thicken up this, this panel a little bit. Again, I'll use the bone folder. And now I can go ahead and center this right on this panel. So now let's grab the butterfly. We want to die cut three butterflies. And I'm going to use the little center as well. And these are the mini pop-up butterflies. And I'm grabbing that smallest one. Again, I'm cutting that from the sparkle cardstock. And then I've got some medium gray color that I'm going to run through for the little center of the butterfly. And these are very tiny. So I'm going to just add a little touch of glue in the center here and then attach that little gray piece down the center of the butterfly. I'm using my Marvy Jewel Picker just to pick that up. And then I'll just use my fingers to round back these wings just a little bit, just to give them more dimension. So now I'm going to create a couple of banners here. I've got this Everyday Sentiment Banner die set. I'm going to die cut one of the smallest one out of the Strathmore Bristol Smooth cardstock. And then I'm going to cut a medium one out of that same cardstock and one out of the sparkle cardstock that we used earlier. I'm just going to glue these two medium sized ones together. And again, that's just going to give us a little bit of thickness there. Now I've got for the sentiment, I'm going to use the happy birthday. And this is from the Simply Sentiment set from Lawn Fawn. I'm placing that smallest banner in my mini misty. I'm going to tape that down with a little bit of the Tombow mini ta glue tape here and I'm going to go ahead and line up my sentiment right on the center of that banner and then I'll be stamping that using the Brilliance Platinum Planet pigment ink. So because we are going to be embossing this I wanted to use a pigment ink and I also want to use my anti-static powder tool just to make sure there's no static on there. So I'm just going to brush a little bit of that powder down first. And then I'll ink up my stamp 
a couple of times here just to make sure I have a nice bit of ink. Once that's stamped, I can remove it from the misty. And then for embossing powder, I'm using my liquid platinum, and this is absolutely gorgeous embossing powder. And I will list all of these products down below and also on my blog. So I'm just going to dip that in the embossing powder here and tap off any excess. And then I'll use my heat tool and heat set this. And you'll see how beautiful this embossing powder is. It really does look like liquid platinum. It's just beautiful. So now I can go ahead and attach this sentiment to my sparkle cardstock banner here. And I'm just going to center that. I'm placing that misty on there just to let that dry. Now let's create the easel for our card. So this is from Sizzix and the Tim Holtz collection. And this is the small easel bigs die. So all I need are these two plates. I don't need the base plate. I'm going to place the die right on that first plate and face up with the cardstock next and then that other plate on top. And I'll just sandwich those together and run that through. And this die also creates the score lines that we need to, to do our fold. So I'm just going to fold along that straight edge and then you'll see that this little tab pulls down to create the little easel. So let's just set this aside for one second here so that we can go ahead and attach those two panels together that we created earlier. So now we'll have four layers of cardstock, which will give us a nice thick card or a nice thick easel card. So I'm going to attach these two together with that Nouveau Deluxe adhesive. And I just want to center this right on this panel. Again, I'm pressing it out with the bone folder. And now I can go ahead and attach that easel to the back. Now what you want to do here is just check. If you place it right in the center, you can see that when that easel is flat, it's going to stick out over the side. I want this to still be a standard A2 size card. So I'm just going to move that over just to be sure that it stays that same A2 size. So I'll use a pencil line here, just going to slide this over just a little bit so that my pencil line won't show. And then I'm going to put the adhesive on this straight part of the easel. So just where it will be attached to the card, right up to that score line. So I'll place it just past that pencil line just a little bit. Again, checking that left side just to make sure it's not hanging over. And then I'll press that down with my bone folder. And you can see that'll give us this cute little easel design. So now I'm going to go ahead and attach the happy birthday. I think I'll pop this up with a little bit of the foam mounting tape. And I did need to cut this down just a little bit. It was just a little too wide. And this will give us a little place for our basket of flowers to sit. So this little panel will act as a little, just something to ground our basket of flowers. So I'm going to remove the backing here and just center that down towards the bottom. So now we can go ahead and decorate the basket. So I'm going to add these little grassy panels in here. And I know it, it's kind of an Easter basket look, but we're going to do three of these. I really just want to fill in the background with some greenery. So that's all I'm trying to do here. So I'm not too worried about it. I'm just going to stack these one on top of another. Again, just to fill that area in with some greenery. So now I can go ahead and attach this entire piece to the center of my card. And I'm going to make it look like it's sitting on that banner again, just to kind of ground it a little bit. I'll add the bow off to the right hand side of my basket here. And I'm just going to use that sculpting tool just to hold that down for a second or two. Then with these little sprigs with the little berries on them, I'm going to have this one of these just kind of hanging down a little bit. So that I'll cut this one 
and then I'll kind of again have it hanging towards the, over the front of the basket and then with this third one I'm going to have it in the back just again kind of filling in that area there just kind of creating that rounded effect for my basket now with these little sprigs I'm going to just add a little bit of height to the basket and what I love about these sprigs is you get one that goes one way and one that goes the other way so these add a lot of movement to the card so I'm just going to pop in quite a few of these again just sort of filling in and then bringing that arrangement up a little bit just bringing your eye up a little bit higher Now I can start adding my little flowers and I'm just going to mix these up. I want a nice variety here. So I'll add a couple of these up at the top of those little uh, sprigs just to kind of make it look like they're, they're um, attached to those little sprigs. So I'm going to go ahead again and just kind of fill in all these blank areas. And I will leave a little space there in the center for one of my butterflies. So I'm just going to kind of work around that. And then I did want to put one down here at the bottom, the bottom right hand side of the basket. So I'm going to use a little bit of the foam mounting tape. I just cut a little strip of it there just so that it would sit up high enough with that in line with that happy birthday banner. And now I'm going to add a butterfly right in the center of my little arrangement. And then I'll add these other two up at the top, just kind of they're just kind of following along the line of those little spatters that we created earlier. So let me give you a closer look at the finished easel card. And you can see all the dimension we have here. I love all of these colors. It's very springtime. And then we've got the little easel in the back so the recipient can just stand this up and enjoy it. And you can also stamp or sign, stamp a sentiment on the back or sign on the back as well. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please hit the like button and subscribe. And don't forget to visit me at pinkwhisperdesigns.com. As always, thank you so much and have a great day. Bye-bye.